We just recently got a puppy and you better bet I'm going to macrame his portrait. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to go from cute little puppy to macrame portrait. And don't worry, I'm going to show you how to make your very own portrait so that it's of your own puppy and not mine. However, I'll give you Bailey's pattern as well if you want to macrame him. Stay tuned. Okay, so there's two ways to go about this, an app called Pixel Art or a website. My favorite free website is called Pixel Stitch. So to pixelate a picture, you click on the option to upload a picture. And I'm gonna do Reeves here, this is my friend's dog. Once you upload your photo, you have to calculate the width of how many stitches you need. And I find 44 stitches is the perfect length for a 12 inch wooden dowel which means you'll be tying 22 cords onto your wooden dowel. Then select how many colors you'd like to be in your image. I chose 12. And always check off the box to show the grid. And this is what Reeves looks like, all pixelated. What's fantastic about this website is that it gives you a color bar at the bottom to show all the colors in this image. And that is super helpful when you go to the yarn store to pick out your colors. Now to get a really sharper, realistic pattern, it is better to up the amount of stitches you have going across and how many colors you have in your image. See, now look how awesome Reeves looks now. I'm actually gonna do something a bit fancy with Reeves's image, so follow me on Instagram to see details on that. But for my little Bailey pup, I'm gonna do something a little bit more easy and I'm gonna use the app. So let's open up the app and hit the menu. I'm gonna click import photo. Then I'm gonna toggle over to 44 pixels, which if you remember is the perfect amount for our wooden dowel. And once you select your photo, it pixelates it. And what's better about this app is that you can completely customize your image. Whereas with the website, what you see is what you get. So I'm gonna speed this video up and I'm gonna go ahead and completely customize this picture. My goal here in editing is to pare down how many colors are being used. The more amount of colors you use in your image, the more realistic your picture will be. Whereas the fewer colors you have, the more cartoony your image will look. For my Bailey pup, I ended up using nine different colors. Once you're satisfied with your pattern, take a screenshot of the picture. And I also recommend saving it onto the app. The reason why I have you take a screenshot of your image is because when you go to upload it from the app directly, it gets rid of the grid and we kind of need that. So go into your photos and then crop your image. And once it's cropped, you can go ahead and print it right directly off of your phone. Alrighty, now that we've made our pattern, let's go ahead and start making our wall hanging. Find the center of your rope and form a loop. Place that loop behind your wooden dowel and tie a lark's head knot. Now, hopefully you're familiar with your knots, but if not, that's okay. I do have a knot tutorial playlist and I'll link it in the cards above. This wall hanging only uses two different kinds of knots, which makes it super beginner friendly. For the majority of this pattern, we're gonna be using yarn and I'm using a brand called Sheep Cheese. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but this is what it's made out of, and here's all their socials. I purchased mine from a local shop here in town. I will leave a link to their online shop in the description box below. So working with a very long strand of yarn, I'm going to tie a vertical double half hitch. So place your yarn underneath your first strand of rope with the small tail end on your left and the long on your right. You're going to form a loop on your right, wrap it around your cord, and pull it through. Then we're going to repeat the same process another time. So make a loop on your right, wrap your yarn around and through the loop. And this will secure your vertical double half hitch knot. Slide your knot all the way up to the very top. And then because your first knot always looks a little funky, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the second one. So take your long strand of yarn and place it behind your second cord. Then form a loop on your right, wrap your yarn around and through the loop. Making sure that it's all the way up to the top of your lark's head knot this time. Then we're going to repeat the same process, loop on your right, 
round and through the loop. So I'm gonna jump ahead to the very end of this first row. Once you've finished your first row here, we're gonna go back in the opposite direction. Working with the same strand of yarn, we're gonna pull it behind our cord here. And then this time we're gonna form a loop on our left, wrap it around and through the loop. And of course, we're gonna repeat the same process another time, which secures our knot. Okay, so I'm gonna carry on with our pattern and I'm gonna zigzag through the rows until I reach the first different color. So to switch out our colors, we're gonna attach another strand of yarn, this time in white, and we're gonna tie another vertical double half hitch, just like we did at the very start of this pattern. And that is how easy it is to switch to a different color. Just be sure to keep all your small, shorter tail ends to the back of your work, and then you just carry on. So I'm gonna skip ahead and then show you how to swap back to the green. Okay, so I completed my row of white and now I need to go back to the green. So find your green cord that you were working with previously. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab it and then you're gonna run it along behind all your filler cords, making sure to keep it to the very back of your work. And then place it over top of your white and then go to the next filler cord and tie your vertical double half hitch knot. It's that easy. All right, so I'm gonna speed up this video and then I'm gonna show you how to finish it off. Wow, look how awesome that looks. Okay, so let's flip it over. And we're gonna clean up the mess on the back. So what I like to do is I like to tie a couple of double overhand knots to secure our pieces in the back. Now the proper, more professional way to finish it off is to actually weave your yarn behind the back and then snip off the excess or you can iron on a felt backing interface. If you're interested in learning how to finish it off in the more professional way, let me know in the comments below and I can totally do a tutorial on that. However, there is nothing wrong with just tying overhand knots as well. If you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I hope you consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.